Hello, ARRL members and QST readers worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with the video to accompany the Ask Dave column in the December 2022 issue of QST. In that issue, one of the questions involved lightning arresters. I thought what we could do for this video is to take a close look at an actual lightning arrestor and see what's inside. The photograph in the article shows my lightning arresters attached to the ground rod. There are six of them. I took off the top right one and we will dissect it. Before we jump into this, I should talk about the term lightning arrestor. In normal amateur installations, pretty much nothing will prevent damage in the event of a direct lightning strike. I know this from personal experience. This is why the companies that make them refer to them as coaxial cable surge protectors. I use the surge protectors made by a company called Alpha Delta. I use them for all my antennas, even the antennas under test. Now, there are different ways to make a lightning arrestor work. In the case of Alpha Delta, there is a gas discharge tube designed to arc over inside the tube when the voltage on the coaxial cable exceeds a certain limit. These gas discharge tubes can be thought of as having two electrodes separated by gas. Different gases can be used for different arc over voltages. They operate on the principle that the voltage across an arc is not that high. Therefore, the voltage passed to the equipment will not exceed the arc over voltage, which can be quite low, just a few volts. This is much better than having the entire lightning-induced voltage of several thousand volts being presented to the input of your radio. If the arc voltage overwhelms the gas tube, then what is inside the gas tube will melt, forming a short circuit. Then, when you try to use your radio, and you see that the SWR is very poor, one of the first things you should do is remove the gas discharge tube and see if things work normally. If they do, you can replace the gas discharge tube with another. I might point out in passing that if you live in a lightning prone area, such as Florida or the Gulf Coast, then the best protection for your equipment is to leave it completely disconnected during times you are not operating. The lightning arrestor that we are looking at is the Alpha Delta model TT3G50. Various letters can be added to this model number to indicate what kind of connectors you are going to use, such as the often used SO239 or N connectors. They are also available in different power ratings, such as 200 watts, which you should use with a 100 watt transmitter, or 2000 watts if you have an amplifier. Note that you can change a 200 watt unit to a 2000 watt unit by simply changing the gas discharge tube. Let's look at the model TT3G50. This one has SO239 connectors. It's based around a piece of stainless steel that is 3 eighths of an inch square times 1 and 1 quarter inches. A screw hole is tapped in the bottom to accept a 1 quarter inch stud at 20 turns per inch. Note this is also stainless steel in case you have to replace it. Alpha Delta also makes an adapter you can connect to your ground rod that will hold up to six of these lightning arresters, which is what I have. On two sides of the unit are firmly attached two SO239 connectors. A hollow is drilled out between the SO239 connectors. You can see here that the center conductors of the two SO239s are attached together. I don't know what is used to attach them together. I would think solder would melt in the event of a strike, so I am guessing that they are welded together. In the center, a small hole has been drilled. This is around the area of the electrode for the gas discharge tube. Note the gas discharge tubes can be purchased along with the new mounting screw and gasket, or you can easily pop loose the gas discharge tube and change it with one for another voltage. 
The red writing on this one is for a 200 watt tube. You then simply screw the tube holder finger tight. I should mention something in passing. If you use a tube rated for 200 watts, the voltage across the tube while it is conducting a surge is lower than the voltage across the 2000 watt unit while conducting. So Alpha Delta recommends that you use the tube best suited to your needs. For example, I often use my 500 watt amplifier with my vertical and my hex beam. So the lightning arresters for those have the 2000 watt gas discharge tube. Given that there is DC continuity through the Alpha Delta arrestor, you can use control devices or bias T devices with these. Not all lightning arresters provide DC continuity. For example, the polyphase arresters do not provide DC continuity, so you will have to wire around them for DC as per their instructions. So there you have it. We've looked at what's inside a lightning surge protector and have found it to be conceptually very simple. These lightning arresters are used widely in industry, so they are manufactured by the tens of thousands, and we as hams benefit from the economics of scale. I highly recommend that you have a ground rod where your cables enter your building. You should attach your lightning arresters to this ground rod, one for each cable entering the building. Now, I have not addressed how to handle control cables, but there are surge protectors available for these also. I hope you enjoyed this video. I encourage you to join the ARRL, which brought this video to you. As an ARRL member, besides getting QST, there is a host of other videos available to you on many, many topics, including for upgrading to general and amateur extra. Until we next meet, 73.